connected to simple superstore data so the thing we will try to achieve today is so if you see we always have the straight lines for tra- transition from one point to another point in the tableau so if we want to make the curve smooth or if we want the smooth transition from one year to another year or something like that we'll see how we can achieve that uh, with a parameter click as well we can achieve that and uh, with the normal thing also first we'll try to achieve that with the normal way firstly we'll see what we are trying to achieve here in year of order date date bank of sales and unique sum of sales this is the circle bring sub category into color now if you see this transition is like straight lines from one year to another year for the rank according to the sum of sales for this sub categories so what if we want to make it a smooth curve or we want to say it a smooth transition from one point to another point we'll see how we can achieve that bring order date so then we bring yeah so the agents now we will try to achieve it for the two years only so we'll see the transition from 2017 to 2018 it fit with to make it circle okay so first we will create bins with the so we try to extract the year from order date we need to fill this in between points so indirectly we need to densify our data so again we will go with the densification with some other technique so from 2017 to 2018 we need blank points for that again we will try to create bins for this bin size we'll create a parameter so that we can switch in between from a straight line to smooth transitions we'll say that one and its value will be 0.01 we'll display it as 100 we'll divide it in 100 parts so each year we'll divide 100, 100 parts so we'll taking the bin size as 0.01 that we show this parameter for now it's been selected to one we will select 100 so if you see we have 100 points in between from 2017 to 2018 but these points will not fill automatically because we don't have any values on this so these are the blank points we want to fill uh, fill in our rows but uh, we will we'll try to do it with this end values only the first and the last values we don't want the original values in this points to be plotted so another way how we can 
achieve that so if you see if we bring in this and if we simply go with the month one so this is also how we can densify in between the points but uh, for this one we are having the original data for each of the month so the table will recalculate it uh, uh, at each month level so that we don't want we just want the end points and we want to fill in our in between points with the uh, with the with those values only to help us densify the data we'll go with the year pin you see in between we have these values will create a sigmoid curve that's a general mathematical equation that will create here 1 plus d to the power 1 from here we'll have everything in the exponent Exponent will be negative of index minus one. Divided by size. Into 12 minus 6. So this 12 minus 6 is just used to shift the graph a little. Now if you see this, this one. In this two line. So if you see we have the we have some value for each of the points from 2017 to 2018 so in between this these points are still not filled these are still the blanks but we have the sigmoid curve plotted in between so to make it a smooth line we'll try to do something we will try to use the sigmoid values and uh, this first and the last rank values and we will uh, like we will calculate in between this uh, 2017 to 2018 blank point uh, we will assign them some value so that uh, the table can plot the graph in between these two points for that we will create a calculation for a smooth curve so what we will do we will use lookup from rank sales We'll take the first value of that. Look up of the bank sales. We'll take the last value of that and then we'll subtract it. And then we will multiply this with sigmoid curve. So in this way, we'll be moving away from the first point by the offset amount from that uh, uh, last minus first rank points. And we'll be multiplying this at each point with the sigmoid curve value. So in this way, it will give us a value for each of the points in between. And the table will be able to plot the curve for this. We'll bring this into view. Remove this. Now the transition plotted, if you can see it's a smooth curve and not directly a straight line if you go for windows. 
we have from 6 to 7 we moved from 6 in 2017 to ranks 7 in 2018 and the transition is now a smooth curve and not a straight line for this one the binders is moved binders is moved from 6 in 2007 17 to 7 in 2018 but it's a straight line transition and here we are achieving the curve transition we can change this with a single click so this parameter can we can use to trans, uh, make it a straight line or a smooth curve one will will make it a straight line and 100 it will make it a curve any doubts in here Ajay, uh, how it will be looking in multiple years? I think for multiple years, if we can remove this filter. Okay. It's, it's, it's taking the first and the last years. It's 2017 and 2020. Right. So it's rank 3 in 2020 and rank 6 in. 2017 so if we are taking the more years we can reduce the pin size so that it will be like less congesting in here like success if you're gonna go with this method and show it for all the three all the four years then probably we might want to have three different graphs and stack them together horizontally um, with the current limitations right so you know one graph for two years that way you stack all the three together on the dashboard if you want to show we can achieve it in single graph as well what happening in here we'll see this Is there a way to use the uh, next uh, function on lookup instead of the first and last? There's something like that, I think. Probably. Right, right, right. Mm -hmm. In the lookup, we need to change it a little if you want to consider at each point. or the offset um, minus one the only problem will be when you use next and previous for the first and the last that there won't be a previous or next respectively there we might want to use a if case if necessary okay okay mm -hmm. okay so i think that we need to twitch a little this smooth curve formula to achieve that multiple years thing will not work directly in here yeah. see that anything else in here okay we'll quickly move on to We'll see how to create a bivariate map 
so what's the bivariate map is so uh, the generally we use the univariate map that uh, uses color encoding to denote a single attribute value right so we'll using the colors for sum of sales or according to that for any of the dimensions state country uh, according to that so why uh, why variate map what it's uh, uh, do is instead of uh, having a color font for color for one attribute only uh, it will be used to represent two different but uh, related attributes so this uh, this will allow us to read more easily or evaluate the relationship between those two different attributes that we are trying to visualize and for example for now we will be using the data set for unemployment rate and household income in us countries so we can we can visualize them both in the separate maps but uh, for now we will try to see it in a single map with the relationship between the unemployment rate and the median household income for the us countries so we'll see we'll first connect to the data set we have the country lookup we have the country and employment data we have the country's median household income data so first if you can see in here in print this unemployment okay. it is a little later up okay. so if you go to this data set see the country code from the country lookup will create the relationship fips code is nothing but a state code plus country code okay so the problem in here if you will see if this country code is uh, starting from one digit so 01357911 and it's going till the three digit numbers it's and we'll be adding the state code onto that but this country um, unemployment rate fips code is a four digit number always what we'll try to do in here we'll try to convert this country code in three digits as well Will, how we can do that you see, we have this in the rows we have these numbers we will go to country code we will change it we will go to default properties we will go to number and we can just make it custom 000, zero. So it will always be a 3 digit number so it will pad it with the extra zeros automatically where yeah, it's three digit it don't need any zeros where it's one digit it will be having two zeros extra we have padded it now we'll go to we'll use median hhi so that's the household income data we have the fps relationship we have created a data source now we will create uh, some calculations for the bivariate map to get the status combined create some calculated fields for the unemployment rate we will get 25 percentile of that If 
six attainment this percentile at the primary trait will get point two five. Get this will go you will get the 75 percent so this we are using to get the status we'll be using this uh, to assign them the high low or medium uh, medium unemployment rate for the countries and then we will assigning the high low and medium and uh, household incomes for the u.s countries and then we will create uh, we'll try to see the combined status of the countries how it's doing in the unemployment rate and how it's doing in the uh, medium household income. We'll create same for household income. Calculations will create a status field and create a HHI status if median household income is lesser than HHI 25 percentile, then we will be having lower. Else if we have the household income greater than or equal to the HI 25 percentile and lesser than 75 percentile. Then we will assign it. We in the twenty five and seventy five percent. This higher than percent. Yes. We'll create a similar status field for the unemployment rate lower than the 25 percentile or in between the 25 and 75 percentile and then i think we'll continue this uh, map building and the legend building i think we will need to build a whole dashboard in this bivariate mapping one so we'll continue this in the next session